Fellow Zimbabweans, fellow countrymen, I congratulate you all on the 40th anniversary of our national independence. Admittedly, it has been a long journey, enough to define four generations. The war of independence, the promise, hope, pain and agony will define us. The journey is not complete yet as poverty, disease and missed opportunities stare in the face of the Zimbabwean child. Black and white, Christian or Muslim, short or tall, the pain and weight of a great nation sits on all our shoulders. Zimbabwe was born 40 years ago after a protracted struggle that so many of our countrymen lose life and limb. The struggle was painful as it took the unflinching spirit of our founding fathers, veterans of the struggle, mothers and fathers who cooked and nursed the fighters, the rural trader who did his or her part, the teachers who mobilized the youths, the Njiba and Chimguido, the nurses whose role can't be minimized, and many heroes and heroines, too numerous to mention. We salute the supreme sacrifice of those who lie in unmarked graves within our country and in neighboring states. We should not forget the nations who shared in our agony and fight for independence. To those who made sacrifices for us but prefer not to remind us, you are not forgotten. To the non soldier and the non collaborator, you are not forgotten. As we celebrate our independence, we are drawn to the power setting feeling of victory 1980, as the then Prime Minister elect Comrade Robert Mugabe steadily raised our national flag the green, red, yellow, and black marking the beginning of a new era. Children rolled on the grounds of Zimbabwe in great happiness and anticipation. They jumped with joy and hugged everyone in sight, for our country was now free. Hope and faith had been restored. The nation united in unison. The policy of reconciliation brought peace and stability in our country. In his famous speech, Prime Minister-elect Mugabe said, If you were my enemy yesterday, today my love for you binds me to you and you to me. The beginning was great and milestones were achieved in education, health and transformation. The huge human resource base will forever remain one of the greatest feats achieved by our nation. Schools and colleges were built and today we boast as the most literate nation on our continent. The uncalled for conflict and resultant loss of fellow countrymen in the Matabele land and Midlands regions stands as a serious reminder of what must never happen. The violence is deeply regretted, and certainly the nation must never countenance such. The great lesson we draw is that violence should never be a way of resolving conflicts. Unfortunately, this continues, and it is sowing seeds of pain and hatred within our nation. The gun should never be turned on unarmed civilians in any contestation or be used in dispute resolution. Let us draw a line in the sand and say never again. The land carries with it below and on the surface our wealth. Its exploitation and use will change the circumstances of the majority. Truly, the time has come to place these resources at the disposal of the majority without fear or favor. It is time to empower Zimbabweans to be masters of their destiny. The next 40 years are a struggle against poverty and hunger ignorance and disease. This requires that each and every one of us put shoulder to the wheel in order to push Zimbabwe forward. It is also time that the young generation steps forward to play their part in the leadership of our great country. The future is yours to take. However, beware of the ban of entitlement. This should be replaced by a sense of service, service above self. It should be replaced by a sense of care and concern for the nation and her citizens. The young people must lead the charge for economic growth and development in our country, and the state must create an enabling environment for this. The youth can no longer stand by 
and the watch world the countries defined by severe economic hardships, food insecurity, and the greed of political elites. In the words of the late General Josiah Makama Tongokara, and I quote, What some of us are fighting for is to see that this oppressive system is crushed. We don't care whether I will be part of the top echelons in the ruling class. I'm not worried, but I'm dying to see a change in the system. That's all. That's all. I would like to see the young people enjoying together, black, white, in the new Zimbabwe. That's all. And end of quote. No man or woman shall be bigger than the people. The constitution should remain supreme and all must take pride in the flag being our protector. I'm reminded of the early days where trust and community bound us together. Families without fear would leave their milk bottles and tokens outside in anticipation of the milkman's delivery the next morning. As the milkman dutifully delivered milk to doorsteps each day, even the criminals were aware not to take the milk, bottles and tokens as they knew this belongs to the children. May the leadership of tomorrow restore this social fabric and not allow corruption to continue to destroy the nation for the sake of the children. At 40, let us rededicate ourselves to the search for the Zimbabwe we want. We have to offer our people a new deal. There should be a sense and purpose as to why we are Zimbabweans. We have what it takes to lead the world, and the lead the world we shall. Unity is strength, what division is weakness. The great people of our country should come together in a new amity. As COVID-19 devastates nations, it will remind us that we belong to each other. The men of our compatriots in the diaspora are a rich resource to our nation. We should do our best to ensure that their welfare and circumstances are of interest and concern to us. Whatever the outcome, this challenge has taught us a huge lesson. We have to look out for each other and create institutions and infrastructure to cater for each and every one of us. Our nation has overcome many challenges before, and there is no doubt that we too shall overcome and come out stronger. Zimbabwe should not forget her responsibilities towards the region, and Africa in particular. We are Africans first. The rivers and mountains that have been used to divide our continent should be rejected. Let us march firmly towards greater continental unity and cooperation. We can run and go as far as countries, but we can run and go further as a continent. The new thinking should not be based on imposed colonial borders, but an acceptance that we are all one people. The first national anthem in our land captures our hopes and aspirations and causes Sikelele Africa, Zimbabwe 40. We lift our flag proudly today because we live in hope of a better life for everyone. God bless Zimbabwe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, oh.